You may be seated. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of Jesus, uh, we pray that you would speak to us loud and clear today, God. Only you can change our hearts, and only you can do the work that is the transformation that can happen from the inside out. And so we just surrender our hearts to you, asking that you speak to us. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and everybody says amen and amen. So uh, I came back from vacation uh, two weeks ago, and I went to uh, Central America. I went surfing. It was pretty fun. Uh, right next door to my room, there were two guys. And one of the guys, he was all into Buddhism, and we hung out for about six days. And so the cool thing was that we had all kinds of, like, spiritual conversations. And after, like, a couple of days, I was kind of like... Uh, shocked about the similarities because I would say like you know uh, God wants us to forgive and he would say like yeah in Buddhism we it's a big time like we have to forgive too and and I'm like hey Christianity uh, you know gratefulness and, and gratitude is a big value and he's like oh it's a big value uh, in, in Buddhism as well and after a couple of days of doing that I was pretty shocked about the amount of similarities that there are in, in the aspect of conduct. I know there's a lot of differences as well, because my mom brought me up uh, in the Buddhism, Islam, ev everything. My mom got all the religions in, in the world, and she made her own thing, and, and she brought us up in, into that. And so I know the differences as well. I know the, uh, just to give you a couple, um, you know, in, in Buddhism, you, during reincarnation, you can, uh, you know, re reborn into like a dog, and you can be reborn into a cat, and you can be reborn into a plant. And, and Christianity says that we only live once, and then we're going to, you know, be with God. And so um, there's a lot of differences. You know, if you're a bad human being, you come back as a dog. That's why if you go to Islam, I mean, Buddhist countries, there's all the street dogs, and nobody feeds them because they think they were thieves or bad people in previous lives. It's true, right? And if you're a bad dog, you come back as a cat, which is funny, right? If you're a bad dog, you come back as a cat, right? And then if you're a bad cat, you come back as a plant, and, and you can even come back as a rock. And then, but if you're a good human being, you, you go, you make your progress in nirvana. You hit nirvana, which is pretty much like you hit nothing. Nirvana is pretty much you vanish, you disappear. So the goal of Buddhism is for you to be very, very good so that you can become nothing. And so that's, it's very different, right? In Christianity, it's eternal life. But as far as conduct and character, I was kind of shocked. I would say, hey, Christ tells us to do this. And he would say, like, in Buddhism, we do that too. And at pretty much everything. And I'm like, wow, God, I've been hanging out with this guy now for a couple of days. And I know Christianity is very different. What is the main thing that you want me to share with him? Because all I want him to go like, wow, that makes my faith and your faith very different. What is that, God? And he said, the biggest difference, Julian, yes, the teachings are very similar. But the biggest difference is that I am alive and I am the one helping people do those things so when i ask you to be thankful i am the one helping people to be thankful when i'm asking you to forgive i am the one giving people the strength to forgive when i'm asking people to be um, i don't know content i am the one that helping them to be content in all other religions the teachings may be this very similar but it was it's almost like all right this is the teaching Go do it yourself. In Christianity, it's like, hey, the teachings are similar, but the Holy Spirit of Jesus is there to guide us in each step of the way. So the resurrection is the big difference. That God is alive and he is with us. And so I shared that with the guy. I said, the biggest difference, man, is that Christianity will believe that God is there to help us accomplish all of those things forgiving gratitude generosity helping others the holy spirit and he's like wow that's very different but now if we're going to be honest now as followers of christ why are we 
if we have the strength of the Holy Spirit, like why, why are we, uh, why do we find ourselves in situations that we find it so hard to love people? Why do we find ourselves in situations that are so hard to, uh, you know, uh, forgive? Why is it so hard? Why we see ourselves like so irritable? Like this one little thing, this one little thing, we would snap. Like if traffic is five minutes long, it destroys our day. What if somebody just says one thing that we don't like or we don't agree? Maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a roommate, maybe it's a professor. We're like, ah, explode. If, if, if the biggest promise of the Christian faith is that God is with us, helping us, and, and the strength that we have is his, why do we find ourselves so snappy, so short-fused? And I'm going to propose to you guys, because I'm the same way, and, and I've been the same way for a long time, uh, until I made some changes last year, and I want to propose to you guys, it's because we're doing the Christian faith and the Christian life on fumes. We're running on empty. We're trying to uh, be a generous person and forgive, but if we're going to be honest, and if there was a way to have an x-ray of our spiritual, uh, spiritual tank, if you will, I think most of us, we would agree that our spiritual tanks are running on empty. Wouldn't you agree? Like if, if, if traffic is three minutes longer, we're, it destroys our day. Do you agree if, if, if that's the case, wouldn't that be revealing to us that we're running on empty? Do you agree with that? So far, so good. And that's most of us, if not all of us. And that was me for probably uh, 20 years of my Christian life. And so I, I started studying, studying this past week about, like, how can we be then a spiritual fool? I want to live life out of fullness. I want to be a dad out of fullness. Uh, I want to be a spouse out of fullness. And I want to drive out of fullness. It's not one person that will cut me off that it's going to destroy my day. How can I do life and ministry out of fullness? And so I, I started reading some passages. And there's a couple of slides that there's a big difference between having the Holy Spirit of God versus being filled with the Spirit of God. Those two things are very different. We, we receive the Holy Spirit of God, we know when we surrender our lives to Jesus. When we come to God and we say, God, my life is yours, and, and that you know, life change happened through the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive the Holy Spirit of God, and we receive the forgiveness, and we receive eternal life, and we receive a lot of good stuff. We receive a new family. We receive, there's a new baptism. There's a new mind. There's a new heart. We receive a lot of good things in the moment that we surrender our lives to God through Christ Jesus. But there's a difference between having the Spirit of God and being filled with the Spirit of God. Because when we are filled with the Spirit of God, that's when we know that it's one person that cuts us off. We, it, it's not going to destroy our day. If I, traffic is five minutes longer, it's not going to be the end of the world. And so we need to be seeking to be filled with the Spirit of God. Let me show you biblically that there's a difference between having the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. So I put a bunch of slides in one. There's two sets of slides. I'm going to go fast because the whole point here is simply to show you that there's a difference between uh, having the Holy Spirit of God and being filled with the Spirit of God. These are moments that where the Bible describes that these people, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And because they were filled with the Holy Spirit, super good things happened to, they, to them and happened through them as well. So let's read it together. Acts 13, uh, 52, it says, Then the disciples were filled with joy 
and with the Holy Spirit. See, filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 4, 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders. And that's when he has the, the speech, you know, for the, uh, uh, the religious leaders back. They, they were filled with the Spirit. And with that filling of the Spirit, they were filled with courage. They're filled with joy. Luke 1, 67. Then Zechariah, that's John the Baptist's father that was mute. All that story you can read. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied. And then there's the, the prophecy, which is the song of Zechariah. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 13, 9. Then Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked directly at Elimas, the sorcerer. And then he cast out the demon out of these men, Filled with the Spirit. Now there's the spiritual boldness. He goes and faces the sorcerer. Next slide. Uh, all of these examples of being filled with the Spirit. Acts 4, 31, after they prayed. Now there's a, a little tip for us. How can I be filled with the Spirit? He tells us that after they prayed, they, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. So that tip is prayer. We're going to talk about that in a second. In Luke 1, and when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, so that's when Elizabeth, she's pregnant of John the Baptist, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, they come to visit one another. That's when this is all happening. The baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit in that moment. And she sings the song of Elizabeth. That's another beautiful song in the Bible. And in Ephesians, there is a direction for us. And it says, don't be drunk with wine. Other translations say, don't be filled with wine getting drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, if you're, we're going to be filled with something, let's be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And so the Bible talks a lot about being filled with the Holy Spirit, and that makes a big difference. That is, is it's, it's what enables us to... Do the things that God asks us to do. It's almost like God is telling us, hey, I want you to drive to Lake Tahoe. But then we don't fill up the gas tank. We're trying to be, you know, kind and generous and forgive and, and help people and have spiritual conversations and do all of those things. But if our spiritual tanks are empty, we're not able to do it. And if we're going to be honest, the, you know, the numbers in the church are not helping. And, and I used to not like these statistics. I used to hate it. And I used to even say, no, that's not true. They're lying. When we hear things like in the church, divorce is just as rampant as outside of the church. I used to go like, no, that's not, that's, that's a fake. But now being in the church and in ministry for all this time and all, it's true. Meaning we Christians, we're trying to do friendships. We're trying to do marriage and parenting in our own strength. And it, we, it doesn't work. It's impossible. To do it. And I'm not trying to judge anybody that got in a divorce. I, none of that. I'm just saying that I used to think it, it was a false idea or study, but then I'm seeing even pastors, like pastors that I know. I'm connected with pastors. That pastor's divorced, that pastor's divorced, that pastor's divorced, that pastor's divorced. I'm like, it's like, I'm like, I, I think it's true. The, the numbers and the, the stats are true. Why? Because we are trying to do life. In our own strength. And I want, I don't want that for you. And I don't want that for me anymore. So as you know, like a year ago, exactly a year ago, last summer, something radical happened in my life. I was on vacation as well. And I was anxious in my vacation. Anxious, in a hurry, not peaceful. It was something. I, I was like, there's something wrong with me, God. 
Why am I on vacation and in a hurry? I have nowhere to go. God, why am I so anxious now? Like, why am I doing so much? Why is my mind so busy? Why am I so worried? Why are there so many fears? And in this past year, it was pretty much the one revelation. That is, Julian, you've been trying to do life and ministry in your own strength. But God, I talk to you. I connect with you. I pray without ceasing. I'm driving. I'm talking to you. I'm I'm commuting. I'm praising you. In moments, I remember I'm talking to you as well. Like, what do you mean? Um, And and, and I'm just telling you my conversation with God, right? Julian, that is not enough. It's still putting little drips in your spiritual tank. Why is the first guy that cuts you off now you exploding? That's an x-ray of your spiritual condition, Julian. Why is one thing that your wife or your kids say, like, rah, that's an x-ray, Julian, of your spiritual emptiness? Because if you're full of God and full of love, because God is love, right? If you're full with the Holy Spirit and God is love, as it's as simple as that. The math is very simple, Julian. God is love. If you're filled with God, you're filled with love. Now you're going to be able to be a, in a relationship with your spouse way differently because you're going to be filled with love. Your daughters, you're going to have that relationship with them filled with love. You're going to be able to be co-workers and people in the community and a friend and a roommate filled with love. And that changes everything, Julian. Changes everything. So I started that journey, and I'm not going to go back. And I want to invite you guys for, to join me in this journey. It is the journey to really being filled with the Spirit. Some changes will have to occur. And it's super, super, super hard because we are addicted to busy and hurry. It's so hard to stop and give the Holy Spirit undivided time and undivided attention. It's so hard. I am a multitasker, and that's not a compliment. My mind is in five different places at the same time. And I am a creative guy. I can have three ideas before lunch every day, guys. I'm starting businesses in my head. I'm starting ministries. I'm, like, opening stuff and closing stuff. Like, it's happening all in my head. And it's still 1130 in the morning, and that happens every day. So the, the mind is overloaded. Activities, activities are overloaded, and now I'm doing the whole praying without ceasing, that is, praying and acknowledging God in all my goings, but not having undivided attention with the Holy Spirit. And that enough for me wasn't filling up my spiritual tank. So let's read this passage that most of you know because you've, if you've been to a wedding, That's the number one passage uh, for weddings. And it's talking about God, number one, because it's talking about love and God is love. And number one, and number two, it's talking about how we can live life when we are filled with God because we will will be filled with love. Let's read it, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, love is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs, love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. So let's leave that up for a moment because That's the main passage for today. If we're filled with God, we're going to be filled with love. And if we're going to be filled with love, we're going to be filled with patience and kindness. We're not going to envy, meaning we're going to have contentment. Let's be honest. How many of us have contentment? 
It's not, we're not going to be braggers. We're not going to be proud. We're not going to have to talk bad about people like, oh, the boss this, the boss that, to feel a little good about ourselves because we already feel good about ourselves when we're filled with God. We know our identity and we know our value. I don't have to diminish you so that I can feel a little up, put you all down so that I can feel a little superior. I, I, feel, I feel secure in what God made me to be. Not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. I think this passage, guys, check this out. I think this passage is a spiritual x-ray. If, if we take a normal x-ray to see bones, then we do MRIs to see muscles and tendons and all of those things. To do a spiritual x-ray, I think we have to compare our daily lives to this passage. Let's be honest. How far are we from this? Are we going to perfectly walk and live in love? No, we will not because we're still humans and there's still traffic and we're still going to have bad days and sad moments and, and tragedy and all of those things. But that's our goal. So if this is an x-ray of your heart and it's, this is an x-ray of my heart, how does it compare? If one person that cuts us off Easily angered. Ah, ah. And we don't give the finger because we're Christians, but we give finger in our hearts. You know what I'm talking about? Like, mm, mm. this finger's not going up, but the finger in the heart's like, mm, mm. The bragging, envy, envy. Oh, I like to have that spouse. I like to have that house. I like to have that marriage. I like to have, you know, this job. I like to have that office. Like, it, when we're filled with God, we're filled with contentment? Come on. Like, who doesn't want that? I want this to be Julian. Am I going to achieve perfectly? I won't. But that's my goal. That's my goal. That should be all of our goals. I hope you're sick and tired like I was one day of living life spiritually empty. That is revealed to us in, in all of those little things that tip us over. You know, like angry and mad and upset and, or even politics. Like I was in a barbecue recently. The, the whole discussion was guns. And, and these two guys like, no, guns are horrible. Guns are awesome. They're horrible. They're awesome. I'm like, ah, guys, can we agree that there's two sides to this coin? And hey, let's continue to barbecue. Because <laughs> there's two sides of like everything. There's two sides. And so like I want this to be the x-ray of my life. And this for, to be the x-ray of your life. And so... For me, when I started like a year ago, I made a radical commitment. And here's the radical commitment that I'm going to invite you to be a part of. I will not, will not, will not leave the house without spending at least five minutes in God's presence. I'm not going to go like, okay, God bless me. You know, God's good. Help me with the commute. And like, no, I will stop. To fill my gas tank, my spiritual tank. Because people will cut me off. People will say things that are hurtful. There will be things online, social media, TV, now political now in this season, that will annoy me, that will frustrate me, that will make me easily angered. I will see things that will trigger envy on me. You know that there's always people that have more than us? Isn't that crazy? Like I was talking to very, two very successful people. Check this out. They don't come to Obi-Wan, so I'm not exposing anyone. This guy is a pilot, all right? And this lady is a lawyer. And they're, very, and they're feeling like losers because they were comparing ourselves to one of the brothers-in-law that, that had so much more that they, I'm like, Wow. It's amazing how discontentment can happen to everybody. But contentment can happen to everybody in Christ Jesus. That's the good news, right? And so, like, I want us to do this. It's radical because you're going to see how hard it is five minutes in God's presence. Then I hope you grow to ten minutes. 
This is so life-changing, family, that I never want to go back to Julian running on fumes, running on empty anymore. I don't. I don't want that anymore. I think the two weeks ago for me was the ultimate example of the Julian that I want to be for the rest of my life and the Julian that I don't want to go back to. It's Friday, 5.15. You know, what happens on the freeways at 5.15 on Friday? Talk to me, traffic, right? I come home from work. You know, like after work, you're like ready to settle. You're ready to like, oh, dinner and couch and TV. Like I want to wind down. My daughter, my, she's in college, right? Like she doesn't want to connect with me that much. But that day, but that day, she's like, Dad, there's a new ice cream shop. Let's go right now. I'm like, that's 5.15 on Friday. Like, that was my initial response. But then, I, and I'm not bragging here. I'm just revealing to you as a source of inspiration. But I, in that day, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. That day, I had made time for God in the morning. I had made time for God in the midday. I had not made any time for God before that. But I had, I had enough in the morning. I had enough in the midday. That, when she said that, I had enough. I didn't snap. I didn't go like, you're crazy. I would never do that. I love you, but not that much. <laughs> right? We say stupid things like that. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, but that day, because when we start doing this stuff, family, this is a different message, but I'll give you the bleep of the next message. We can hear the Holy Spirit so much better because we're spending time with the Holy Spirit. That day, I said, the first thing I said, I said, honey, but it's 5.15. There's a lot of traffic, you know, this time. And she's like, but it would be amazing. It's, apparently, it's the best ice cream in San Diego. And that moment, the Holy Spirit was like, Julian, your daughter wants to connect. That is greater than traffic. But see what I'm saying, guys? It's not like, hey, spend quality time with the love, your loved ones. Then you're like, oh, trying to do it in your own strength. No, it's, it's through God. All this goodness starts to flow. Flowing out of us. It's out of overflow. We live life out of overflow now. Not out of like, oh, Holy Spirit of God, help me now to go eat ice cream because it's 5.15 and I hate traffic. The Holy Spirit's like, it's your daughter. At that moment, they were, let me be honest, they were still like 5% annoyance right right here like eh, eh, eh. I was able to get in the car and the traffic really was wasn't all that big deal anymore because the goal the Holy Spirit helped me to see that even if we were stuck in traffic that was a win because the point was connecting with her so traffic wasn't bothering me that's not Julian a year ago family that's not and that's the Julian that I don't want to go back to. And I'm connecting. And then, you know, because God was trying to test me, like, not just one way with traffic. You get there, there's no parking in this place. Like, there's no parking. And I'm like, okay, there's no parking. We're going to find parking together. You know, but she's in that age now that she's like, park at 7-Eleven, Dad. There's no problem. No worries. I'm like, I know enough to know that, like, $400 toll ticket. I, I don't want that. And so, no, we, we, I found parking. That was, and then the third test was, oh, great, OB, maybe having a little blackout, brownout. Anyways, uh, the third test was you get there, there's a line of about 45 minutes because the motto of this ice cream place is that we're going to let you, and every client, we're going to let you try all the flavors. But guess what happens? Everyone's right there for like 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, this one and that one and this one. But they, you try all of them. But for the glory of God, and I hope it serves uh, for inspiration for you and for me to continue going, I was able to enjoy that night through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he is love. And when we are filled with love, you're going to see what's going to happen to you. 
And what's going to happen to your relationships? What's going to happen to your heart? But it's the weirdest thing. It's the simplest thing. Stop to spend time with the Holy Spirit of Jesus. But it's the hardest thing because we don't know how to do it. So I will finish with just giving you an example of how, what would that look like for you? If you have five minutes only, let's start with five minutes. You, you uh, sit down and then for one minute maybe you can stay just in silence in God's presence. You put a worship song in, in your phone. Maybe you have uh, whatever, YouTube or Spotify, Pandora, whatever you like. One minute of that. Then you can, for one minute, I found this on YouTube. You can Google it on YouTube. It says, Encourage me, encouraging Bible verses. There are four hours of encouraging Bible verses. Then you can put this for, watches over you will not slumber. My kids don't like the accent, but. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will Starting the day like that. Then you can make your petition. So I told you so far you did a little bit of silence. You sang, sang a worship song, your first favorite worship song. You heard three minutes of the Bible. You can find that on YouTube. Find the accent that you like, that you find it pleasing to you, right? Really, we're all different. She's like, is this AI voice? Is this a robot that? I'm like, not everything is AI, okay? <laughs> There's still real people in this world with uh, different voices. So anyways, it's not all robots. Then you hear the Bible, and then you make your petitions for the day. Holy Spirit, help me, protect me, use me, protect my loved ones. Uh, you know, I, I want to be filled with you. You are my source. You're the source of my love. You're the source of my strength. So fill me. Be with me in Jesus' name. And now, breakfast. It's not that hard, but it's super hard. It's simple, but very difficult. So I have uh, some uh, questions for you to ponder. And that is at the bottom of your notes. And also, I have a slide for that. Thank God we have one projector. There's one extra slide. So questions for you to ponder, to contemplate. If you compare your life to 1 Corinthians 13, 13 that we just read, what is the diagnosis if you compare your life with that passage? What are some of the attributes that you feel like, wow, this is lacking that, that's lacking my life? Is it similar, different to 1 Corinthians in what ways? So you're writing it down. Uh, if my life looked more like 1 Corinthians 13, how would my life be different? And then you list the differences. Wow. You know, if I had more patience, I'll probably, you know, deal better with coworkers and family members and this political season, whatever. Am I spending undivided time with the Holy Spirit of Jesus? That's what I want for you. I know that's what I want for me, guys. Let me tell you a little secret about pastors real quick, uh, and then we'll close. Pastors, after doing ministry for like 20, 25 years, we kind of get bored. Because we've done a hundred weddings, we talked about forgiveness a thousand times, we preached the whole Bible five times, and, and that's why I see a trend. And I'm not downing, I'm not talking bad or rag, you know, bad about pastors, but I, because they get bored, that's when they start. I always start a podcast. I'm going to start a, a YouTube video. I'm, it's almost like they need a, a, a new, refreshing thing to start because everything else ministry related already done enough. If we connect with the Holy Spirit, we're never going to get bored. How, how it happens to church members, pastors start podcasts and YouTube channels, okay? How does it happen to church members? Uh, church members change churches every five years because they get spiritually bored. But it's, I promise you, I promise you, it's not the problem. The church is not the problem. The, the pastor is not the problem. The worship is not the problem. It's not, promise, it's not even the coffee and the donuts. I promise you. It's we are bored because we're running on empty. If we're only running out of fullness, the Bible says Holy Spirit is living. The Word of God is living and active. It's never going to be boring if we're living life filled with the Holy Spirit. I hope that's your desire today. And you can start even tonight doing family time together with your spouse, with your roommate. Just spend five minutes, then whatever in God's presence. Let's pray. God, 
Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. You are our goodness. You are the source of our love. You are the source of our patience. You're the source of our kindness. And if we're trying to do this on our own, God, we're going to fail. We don't have enough in our human capacity, God. And so, Jesus, would you fill us today? We want to do life today filled with the Spirit, God. Filled with your love and filled with your patience. Filled with your joy. Filled with contentment, God. Filled with you, God. Would you fill every one of us up to the brim? Would you help us make some adjustments in our lives, God? that is so fast-paced, to stop and spend undivided time with you makes such a big difference, God. You make such a big difference. We need more of you, God. Our parenting needs more of you. Our marriages need more of you. Our friendships need more of you, God. We love you, God. Father, I also want to bless everyone that is here, God. I want to bless the week that is starting today, God. I want to pray for everyone that is here, God. Would you bless every single person spiritually, God? Would you bless their minds and their hearts and their souls and their spirits? Would you protect us spiritually, God, against attacks and accusations of the evil one, God? Would you help us to live life in, in communion and fellowship with you and continue to reveal yourself to us in fresh and new ways, God. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen and amen.